Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. I'm Marilyn and my channel is Making with Marilyn. Now recently on my channel, I showed the X-Tool F1 laser. Now this is a Galvo laser, which just means it has mirrors in there focusing that beam instead of a laser head that moves around. So it's really fast. Another nice feature about this laser is it has an infrared laser, so it'll actually engrave on metal. Well, I just had the extension kit show up, so we're going to unbox that, attach it, and we're going to see what I can make with it. I am super excited to dig into this box. Now I've cut the tape, and I will tell you this box is nice and heavy, so I feel like this is going to be a really sturdy piece of equipment. And the first thing I see is this user manual. I love that they include one because some places don't. Some things that you get, you're referred to the internet. And I understand that because sometimes there's updates and they want you to have access to those updates. And sometimes they want to save money on paper. But I really like having something that I can flip through and look at if I need it. Okay, so let's take this next layer out of here. So that is a piece of really dense styrofoam. It was packaged very well. And I love this. This is going to make that F1 have such a bigger footprint. I can do so many more things with it. And I can do a lot of batch engraving or cutting. All right, let's lift this out. Again, this is packaged really well. It's in there nice and tight. And... Like I said before, this is nice and heavy. Okay, so let's look at all sides of this. This is where I'll put my substrate or whatever I'm going to use. And then there's a bar here that these rollers are going to roll against. On the bottom, this is inset. Let me turn it to the side. Okay, there's another roller on this side. So this is inset. Hopefully you can see it a little bit better with the brown under it. And so this little inset here, that's going to be my guide for where to put it down on the base of the F1. Now what this does is, the base will stay where it is. And then the top will roll back and forth to give you that much more width. Okay, there's some tools in here somewhere. Okay, so this is just a thin piece of that dense styrofoam. And then here is all the accessories. So here's the cord that's going to attach it to the F1. And I'm glad they included this little, well, I was going to call it a screwdriver, but it looks like a special type, kind of like an Allen wrench. I guess that might be considered an Allen wrench. But it's a size you're going to need for this. All right, so here is the straight edge that's going to go, I think, at the left end of the bed. Now, the numbers are upside down, so it's probably going to go on like this. We're going to figure all that out together. And then you get five clamps with this, two different types of clamps. And I've seen these on videos, but I'm very tactile. I'm a very tactile learner, so I'm going to figure them out once we get this thing installed on the F1. Now the very first thing that I want to do is I want to go ahead and use the cable that's included in the box with the extension kit and I want to attach the extension kit to the F1. Now I'm not going to place it on the base yet, I just want to hook it up. So there's a port right here. And then there's a port on the very back right side of this extension. Let me turn that around so you can see it. Now both ends of the cable are the same, so you can't get them confused. Then the next thing that I do before I do anything else is I'll go ahead and I'll open the X-Tool Creative Space. It's going to walk me through this entire process. Now, I know I have a lot of things on my desktop, but just ignore that for now. Now, after turning the power on on the back side of the F1, I'm going to go right down here and I'm going to open up the X-Tool Creative Space. Now, it's telling me there's updates. 
Right now, I don't want to deal with that, so we're just going to move on. Okay, it recognizes that it is connected. If it's not turned on, it'll say not connected. You'll have to turn it on, and then you can connect it. It defaults to the regular base, so I'm going to click right there and go laser extension. Now this is going to walk me through everything that I need to do before I use this. So I'm going to say go, and it says follow the guide to align and calibrate. It wants me to go ahead and put on that ruler and then put it where the right side of it is even with the zero on the back side of the extension. So let me go ahead and do that. Now here's the little ruler that it was talking about. And notice the numbers are right side up when this is at the bottom. So I'm going to slide this on. Hopefully you can see this on the camera. I'm going to slide it on right over here. Now, if it won't come on, it's because you need to loosen this screw. So I'll go ahead and move it to the right side is at the zero. And then I'll screw this down. Now it assumes I already have the extension up on the base. So let me go ahead and go back to the other camera and show you how you do that. Once I do that, it wants me to tighten the screws a little bit. It doesn't want me to tighten them fully. Then when I click next, there's going to be a laser that shows up on that ruler. So let's go ahead and at least get this on the base of the F1, slightly tighten those screws, then we'll come back and click next. In this divot, you'll see there's two white lines, one here and one there. When I put that on top of this base, those white lines are going to line up at the seams where this interior plate meets the exterior plate. Now it's off a little bit, so let me pull it a little bit to the right. That looks pretty good. And then the next thing it tells me is to line up the front of this extension piece with the second line right there. Hopefully you can see, here's line one, here's line two, line one, line two. So at this time, I need to slide it forward just a little bit. Now it wants me to expose those screws, so I'm going to slide this base over to the right, and there's these little screws right here. Now I'm kind of moving it, let me get it back in position. So there's some little screws. They won't come out, but you have to tighten those down. Again, it doesn't want me to tighten them all the way down, just have them kind of loose. So I just tightened it enough that I know that the screw is actually starting to grab the threads or the thread of the screws grabbing the bottom. Now my computer's in the way, let me move that. And so then I can keep sliding this to the left and I'll expose this screw right here. Again, we're gonna go ahead and screw that in some, but we're not gonna get it real tight. Now that I have the ruler in the right place and I've tightened it down, I'm going to say next. What that's doing is it's having just a small amount of laser shine down on that ruler. I'm supposed to check to make sure those lines are in the right place. I can go ahead and screw this down tight. After that, the instructions say to tighten the left screw. Now that I've tightened the left screw, I click next. So you can see the software moved it to the left to expose that right screw. Now I need to tighten the right screw.
Now, I make sure I don't over tighten those. That's just never a good thing when you over tighten screws. So now that we're finished with that, I can go ahead and click on complete. Now, I didn't see it in the instructions, but I think I should move that back to about the center. So I'll do that. Now, I'm going to go ahead and cut out a jig that I made. I designed this some time ago after watching videos by Sam Craft. I want to try it out on this X-Tool F1. What that's going to do is it's going to allow me to batch process some dog techs. So let me go ahead and do that. I'll fast forward through it and then we're going to try that thing out. Here's my little jig. I think it turned out really nice. I just hope it works out nicely. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and push this firmly up against the ruler on the left side. And then on the ruler there's white lines at the front and the back and your product or your jig should be centered between those two. Now it's time to try out one or both of those clamps. So here's one of the clamps and it has this groove or it has these feet with the groove because those go in, you can either put it in the back, there's a groove back there, or you can put it in the front. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in the back groove. Now I have my piece of wood just a little bit too far back for it to fit. All right, so I slid it behind it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and push this back against it to get it really tight. And I'm also gonna push it to the left so that it's really straight up against that ruler. Now I can go ahead and tighten it down and then I can lift up and just put this right over the top. It had got out of center a little bit down there, so I just went down and fixed that. Now here's the other clamp. And so you push on this and it opens that up. You just set it down in there and make sure it's tight it's not moving. Then I can lift up on this piece and that allows you to rotate. Now I have these two close together so it's not going to work that way. So here's what I'm going to do instead. I'm just going to go ahead and put it in there, slide it against my jig to keep it in place there. I don't think it's going anywhere anyway. Now I have these little black dog tags that I got off of Amazon and I'm thinking about an issue here. They're pretty thin. They're thinner than what this top piece is. It's trying to focus on the top piece. So I think what I need to do is loosen this up. I'm going to go ahead and put a dog tag right there close to where it wants to focus. Let's move that over one. Since I want to use the dial on the side to focus it, I'm just going to pull it away and then I can see if it's focused. So we'll put that back in place. And then to try out this jig, I just want to try to engrave on two tags. So I'm going to put one at the top left. And then I'll put another at the bottom right. If it gets both of those right, <laughs> then I'm pretty confident that the rest would be in the right place as well. So I'll bring my jig into Xtool Creative Space. I'll bring in my images and we're going to see how well this works.
Now I'm ready to lower this green protective shield. Now. now, if I put it all the way down, it's going to bump into something over here. So unfortunately, I have to leave it up just a little bit. I want to push this over and see how far I can bring it down. And because of this, I'm going to definitely wear these glasses. Now, even when I have this all the way down, I like to wear safety glasses. That's just me. I really want to protect these eyes. And then I bought some safety glasses off of Amazon that are good for blue light and red light. Now, after I brought all this in, I realized it wasn't recording. And so here's what I did. I went up to File, and I said Open Project. When I got into my projects, I opened my Jig project. However, I set Layer 4, which is the outside, to Ignore. And I set Layer 3, which are all the little rectangles, also to Ignore. I'm not going to cut this again. I'm just using it to know where to place my designs. Now if I, and if I click on my design, you can see there's extra white. So you can't see where those lines are. So I moved it around to where I thought it was good. And then when you click off of it, you can see how it's lined up. So that works out really, really nicely. Once I was happy with them, and I have the one here and the one here, let's go ahead and click on that layer. I set it to engrave, and then it always defaults to blue light. I moved it to infrared. Once I moved it to infrared with a dog tag selected for my material, it set all this for me. Now I went ahead and turned the filter on. I just like to have it running early, so you can probably hear that. And then I need to press this button right here, and then it's going to start. Let's pull this over. I think those turned out so nice. All right, let's go ahead and move these clamps out of the way. Now I do see an issue. <laughs> I do see an issue. Let me show you what that issue is. Okay, so my jig worked for me. I can just poke through that hole and pop that out. I can poke through this hole and pop that out. And here's the issue I see. Okay, it doesn't look like it did anything bad. Because this was in here, and I actually had my image too large, I was afraid that I might have actually engraved on my jig, but I didn't. So that's good. And then I just had that one in there. Remember to determine how to focus it. Let me go ahead and turn this off. Now here's the dog tag. So it started as black, where it engraves turns a really light color. Now, there's a little bit on there. I should actually use alcohol to clean these off, which I will. But you can tell they engraved beautifully. I'd like to find a file just to see how detailed this can get. I think those are really nice. Now, should my design have been a little bit smaller so that it didn't run into the hole? Maybe so. Is this one perfectly lined up? No, not quite. But I think the jig really did help to get it where it needs to be. Now, even though those aren't perfect, they're pretty darn close. But what I wanted to do today was learn how to attach this, learn how to use the software in conjunction with it, get my jig cut out, and try it out. I'm pretty happy. Now, if you're interested in an X tool, I do have a link in the video description. If you're getting a qualifying purchase, then you can use the discount code in the link. You can get some money off. And then I also receive a referral fee. Now, they don't tell me who you are, so I can't give you a proper thank you. But I do want you to know that if you're in the market and you use that, I truly appreciate it. So thanks so much for joining me today, and as always, until my next video, bye-bye. Okay, after that, oh my goodness, after that last one, I could not help 
but to try something with really small lettering. This is amazing. That is simply amazing. Look at this. Hopefully my camera's actually focusing well on that. Let me back it up just a little bit. I can't believe how well that did. Now, I do need to get better with placing it on the jig. <laughs> you can see it's not quite perfect. It's a little bit too far to the left. But that engrave is out of this world. 